Good morning, church family. <clears throat> Hope everyone is doing well. Um, my family's doing well. Everyone's recovered. Uh, Lily's back home with us, and she's over her coronavirus. And she was telling me about how it felt to have it and some of the symptoms and things. And I know it could be a little bit different from person to person, but in general, she uh, was telling me what's going on there. But she's all better. Um, Tanya is doing well. She's getting a little bit better every day. She's no longer on crutches, uh, so that's good. I know a lot of you haven't seen her in a long time, and uh, so I'm excited for her to come back to church when we, re we uh, resume in-person services. I uh, also wanted to mention that my dad and Sally, they are in Gatlinburg um, right now, uh, enjoying the uh, the lights and the winter atmosphere and everything and uh, I know my dad was really looking forward to going down there and spending some time as you know dad's cancer has come back with a fury and kind of doubled on him and he'll be starting his new treatment soon so hopefully that will uh, work and I'm just uh, really encouraging dad to spend as much time as he can enjoying life and uh, you know, whatever he wants to do, uh, do it. And I uh, wanted to uh, uh, continue to pray for Sister Janice that her knee uh, heals and heals uh, quickly. And I talked to her uh, about six days, five, six days ago. And she was telling me that uh, she still has, you know, some pain and that it was pretty bad. Uh, it was probably the worst surgery she's had, I think she said. And so we want to remember her in our prayers. We also want to remember those uh, that may not be feeling well uh, today, even if it's just a regular old sinus infection or whatever it is. We want to pray for them and all the things that we have in our hearts that uh, that no one knows about. We want to pray for them. Um, I do have something very strongly on my heart and my mind this morning. It's it is a topic that I've preached on before. It's been a while uh, that I've dedicated a full sermon to it, but I think it's for a reason. I feel very strongly about this sermon this morning, uh, and that usually tells me that you know the, the Lord wants me to to mention it. I've meditated upon it. See, one thing I wanted to mention is that when it comes for me, when when time when the time comes for me to think about sermons, it's not just an automatic. Uh, I do, you know, I pray, I meditate, I ask the Lord to give me the message that He would have me to preach, and sometimes uh, I'll get a thought, sometimes I won't, and then I have to kind of open up the Word of God, look through it, uh, see if something pops out to me, and and then uh, oftentimes than not, you know, something does come to my mind. <clears throat> I start to think about it. Well, something that I truly believe that the Lord wants us to meditate on this morning is the subject of the world. Uh, I know that you've heard me speak about the world before, and I'm not trying to bore you to death. I think that there's a reason why uh, I have this very strong impression upon my heart this morning. Uh, for several hours last night, which is often, on an early Sunday morning or late Sunday night or Saturday night, however you want to look about it, uh, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm wide awake just preaching to myself, uh, thinking about the Word of God, thinking about whatever the message uh, is supposed to be, and that's how I was earlier this morning. Um, the world is definitely a very uh, interesting place, to say the least. Um, you know, as a Christian, it's very difficult to uh, go through, <clears throat> excuse me, your, your life in this world without being ridiculed at least one time or another for being a Christian. And what's troubling is that not all that long ago, I mean, maybe I'm thinking probably 20 years at least, uh, but uh, more like 20, 30, 40 years ago, uh, there were a, a lot of Christians that had a lot of big voices and uh, even commercials on our TV were family-based. They were 
they they weren't pushing any kind of political agenda. Uh, they were all about family. And I remember like, you know, McDonald's commercials and things. They were always about the family, uh, getting together. And many years ago, uh, a lot of times families didn't go to McDonald's as often as they do today because, you know, to them, or at least some of us, it was very costly and it, it was more of a treat than it was, uh, you know, something that you may go once, twice a week. Um, I may go to McDonald's maybe once a month, you know, I, uh, but that's more for health reasons, but anyway, and, and, and that's how a lot of our businesses were. Our businesses were like this for, you know, hundreds of years. Uh, it was family based. It, it was Christian based for the most part, or at least, or at least godly based. Let's put it that way. It may not necessarily have been uh, Christian based, but it was godly based. Like there might've been, you know, Jewish, uh, businesses and things, but they believe in God. They just don't believe in Jesus Christ being the Messiah. Um, and then even uh, businesses that may not have been very faithful to church going, but they still had uh, uh, relative uh, good morals and they uh, treated their fellow man uh, <clears throat> uh, well. And what I've noticed, and I'm sure you have noticed too, and if you haven't noticed, and uh, I, I don't know how you could miss it, but it would be, it'd be this, that the, uh, a lot of our businesses nowadays, uh, when they have commercials on TV, they, uh, have a very strong political agenda and they, uh, even some of the commercials are very anti-family and they're anti-Christian. Um, a lot of them. I saw a, a Ritz commercial, uh, earlier this week. And it was a commercial about the holidays, uh, Christmas, everybody getting together as a family. And there were, there was a, uh, uh, a gay couple that was in there and, and that they were worried about they, if they would be accepted into, uh, the family and all that. And, and, uh, so I started thinking about that commercial and then I saw another commercial, uh, I can't recall off the top of my head, uh, who the brand was, and they did something similar. So the first, the Ritz commercial, I believe, was two men, and then I saw another commercial that was two uh, two women. And <clears throat> the thought that comes to my mind is I have a lot of thoughts that come to my mind. Is that um, first of all, this only affects less than one percent of the entire human population, or I should say, the population in America. Um, and that's not just a conjecture, that's a fact. So, so you have companies and you have all these agendas that are pushing a, uh, a view, uh, onto 99% of Americans that may not necessarily agree with that view. Um, and I, I, it's frustrating because uh, maybe I uh, don't want my children to be subjected to thinking that um, homosexuality is is fifty percent of America, uh, which it isn't. Uh, I am a pastor of a church. I'm also a father, and I uh, don't wish any harm on anyone. I just think that I should be in charge of. Uh, my my children's well-being and my children's faith uh, rather than the government doing it and rather than uh, TV and and TV shows and commercials and news stations doing it for me. I spend a lot of time <clears throat> combating the world uh, and I'm not I'm not afraid of speaking uh, the truth there's a lot of preachers in this in this world in this country that are afraid to speak the truth. They're afraid because of uh, uh, retribution from society. Uh, I could certainly understand that there are a lot of uh, worries that someone has if they uh, mention certain things in the pulpits, and uh, the next thing you know, you got a bunch of protesters out in front of your house screaming and yelling, and you and you lose your job and 
and all this, that, and the other. Uh, I believe in freedom of speech. I believe in freedom of expression. I just noticed that when it comes to Christianity, it seems that we have a lot less of freedom of speech and a lot less of freedom of expression and certainly a lot less of freedom of religion. 30, 40, or 20, 30, 40 years ago, we, as Christians, we had a strong voice in the community. And, it, and in my opinion, it wasn't a bad voice. I mean, it was a good, wholesome voice. Certainly, there are always individuals that have to ruin it for the rest of us that that may do wrong things in the name of Christianity. And But that goes with any religion. That goes with, with politicians. That goes with CEOs of companies and all kinds of things. Um, and it's not just uh, a Christian's view of uh, homosexuality or or uh, any other things that we deem immoral. Uh, the world, as we go on, as every decade that goes goes by, the world becomes more corrupt. It becomes more immoral. It it uh, it really interferes with the way our children think. And you know, social media definitely hasn't helped with any of this. I feel bad for our youth sometimes because I feel like they're being misled. I feel like they're being brainwashed and they're being just a bunch of sheep following some immoral people in our world. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't stress this enough that I, you know, people are free to do whatever they want in their lives, but that doesn't mean that I have to agree with it. That doesn't mean that I have to even accept it. Uh, I don't push my views upon someone else and make and have to make them feel like they have to accept it. So why do I, as a Christian, have to be made to feel like I'm forced to accept something that goes against God's Word or goes against teaching of God's Word? Um, and that's the way I think that preachers in this country need to be. I think they need to be stronger. I think Christians uh, in general need to have a bigger voice. They need to be stronger. We are the moral compass I should say, you know, God is the moral compass of our entire existence. We need to be stronger in our voices. And, you know, the, the squeaky wheel always gets the attention, right? So as soon as you offend certain groups of people or you say that you're against abortion, you say that you're against homosexuality or um, against many other things that society... Uh, nowadays thinks is, is normal. And I'll give you a real simple one that's not really all that controversial, is Christians are family-oriented. They believe that, a, you know, a man and a woman and children, you know, in the home, teaching children how to be uh, godly, teaching children about God, teaching them right from wrong, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it seems like even more so nowadays, you have these big feminist movements that say you don't need men. Uh, men are just uh, idiots, and that, you know, that they're just constantly talking down about men and men in the home. Listen, folks, you know, God made men uh, with certain desires and certain uh, physical traits that uh, we can't deny, we can't change, that God made us a certain way. And and in the, in the general, God made men with more muscles and doesn't mean that we're smarter, uh, it just means that he made our physical attributes bigger. I don't know why. Maybe it could be as simple as we just are the workhorses. We get out there. We chop trees down. We do physical things more than typically women do. And women, uh, God made a, a, a woman very beautiful. I mean, I, look at all the things that women can do that men have a struggle that struggle to. I mean, women... Are emotional creatures. Uh, they are able to take a child and and hold that child, and that child will feel better. And sometimes, as us men, we can do that too, but it's not the same. Um, a mother in the home is like the glue that holds the family together. You know, you need a good mother in the home, and you need a good father in the home. And as Christians, we believe in the family unit. In the family unit, everything starts at home. Uh, and our goal as parents, we know that we don't necessarily expect our children to be be doctors and scientists and 
or a president of the United States. You know, we just, we want our children to be successful in whatever they choose to be in their life. And we uh, want them to uh, understand that there is a God and and that we need to obey God and we need to trust in God and we need to uh, uh, try to put God first in everything that we do. Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. We fail. We succeed. But the good thing is, is God doesn't fail and he will succeed. And no matter what kind of laws or what kind of immoral things are pushed upon Christians on a day-to-day basis, an hourly basis, we know that God will prevail. We know that Jesus will prevail. He has overcome the world, which makes me remember uh, John 16, 33, which I've quoted many, many times, but it's such a powerful verse of scripture. It says, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Notice that he says, in the world ye shall have tribulation. As a Christian, we will be ridiculed a lot. We'll be called bigots because we're against uh, homosexuality. And then, and then you have the abortion part of it and uh, the overwhelming majority of Christians. You know, we are uh, pro-life and then we get made fun of for and ridiculed and protested and everything for being pro-life. And whatever happened to just being able to share a view and not be necessarily ridiculed or lose your job over just because of a view. You know, I I have a lot of Christian views that goes against the mainstream uh, teaching of the world, but that doesn't mean that I wish any harm on them. Uh, I don't agree with it, but I don't wish any harm on anybody. So, you know, the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill and, and treat thy neighbors as... Uh, we would treat ourselves and uh, love thy neighbor. I mean, I I tried to obey that <clears throat> as much as I can. Um, but this this really bothers me because if you think it's bad now, wait another ten years, and we don't know how things will be in ten years. But ask me, uh, or let me ask a question: Are you better off? Is the world better off now than where it was 10 years ago? I'm talking about morally. And is the world better off now than where it was 20, 30, 40 years ago? I would say that unequivocally the answer is no. We are not better off than we were 10 years ago. We are not better off morally than we were 20, 30, 40 years ago. And I'm not necessarily saying that You know, everything in the past is always better than the future. There's a lot of great advancements in technology and advancements in science and medicine that certainly we have came a long way and helped a lot of people keep their lives or live longer. But that's not what I'm talking about. The more that society embraces uh, immorality, or I should say things that go against God's word, no matter what it is. Uh, husbands mistreating their wives. Go read the book of Timothy, where it clearly, I believe it's the second chapter of Timothy, uh, First Timothy, where it talks about uh, how husbands and wives should treat each other. And nowadays, uh, society in the main is going against a lot of those, uh, a lot of those teachings, how a husband and wife should treat one another. Uh, The Bible has all the answers to us as far as morality, how we should treat one another, how we should treat one another even if they are not uh, sharing the same views that we have. Um, The rain and the sun, the sun shines on the wicked and the just. And uh, we're all Uh, living on the earth, and we try to get along as best we can. Uh, The Apostle Paul, for example, you know, he didn't always live for the Lord, but I believe that he was a child of God nevertheless, and he was converted on the road to Damascus, and he became a very strong and one of the strongest servants of God, of Jesus Christ, and he wrote many of the uh, the books in the Bible. Uh, He wasn't afraid 
to tell others where they went wrong. Uh, the Apostle Paul was a very godly man, but he did not uh, stop uh, to rebuke the church at Corinth when they had backslid and started to go back to some of their uh, Jewish traditions that they had or Jewish religion practices that they had when they had converted to Christianity. Uh, they had some false teachers in there that were telling them that they needed to go back and do certain things of the law, which Jesus had changed uh, and said that it's no longer about the law, that Jesus is the way, he's the light, uh, he is the door. And think about Jesus, you know, Jesus, there's never been someone that's had more love than Jesus Christ, God Almighty. And even Jesus, when he was in the temple preaching and, and the Sadducees and Pharisees, they rebuked him and had arguments with him. Jesus didn't just be quiet and not say anything. He defended himself. He defended Christianity. He, and he did so very wisely because he is God and he knows exactly what to say. He knows what's in the heart of men and what their agendas are. Uh, so as preachers, you know, we need to be strong. We need to, uh, first of all, understand that, you know, this world, this life that we live in is only temporary. We're only here 70, 80, 90 years. I say make it the way that you want to make it. Make it the way uh, that it should be. You know, follow follow Christ. Uh, uh, put him in first in everything that you do. And I, I say that often. I just feel very strongly about this. I'm 45 years old, and I feel like there are less years ahead than there are behind. And I'm taking much more serious about what I find that's important in my life. Um, I think that maybe that's a natural progression in life. Maybe as the older you get, you start realizing the things uh, that are important. And maybe the things you thought were important 20 years ago or 10 years ago or even a year ago, maybe not isn't as, as important as it was. I used to spend a lot of time, you know, playing video games. This was years ago on the computer, and I spent way too much time, and I was uh, found myself um, not spending enough time with the family. So I stopped doing that, and eventually I just stopped playing it all together, and I started thinking to myself, what, what am I doing? You know, I'm not spending enough time with my family, and that's what's really important, not some stupid video game and... Uh, or we can substitute anything, you know. We in this world there are a lot of masters and there are a lot of gods, small g, that can interfere with our service to Almighty God. You know, if if anything that you put ahead of God and make that the master and not God is wrong, just pick a subject matter, uh, and and if you put something ahead of God, it's not the way that it should be. And it's something that you should change. And it's something that I've changed in my personal life. And I try even harder. But anyway, in closing, I'll just say that the world is a the world is a very big place, and it's changing so fast. And and just over the past uh, few years, just look over the past, you know. 10 years, let's say, all, all this political agenda and all these, these, um, let me see, political, let's say political agendas and all these agendas by companies and, and all these groups and things that are anti-Christian and, you know, they've infiltrated into a lot of these places and, and you see commercials all the time promoting a view that goes against Christianity and, and then we're forced to see it and forced to watch it. And you say, well, just turn, turn the channel. Well, you don't know when a particular commercial is going to come on. I mean, just think about the things that are being taught in our schools or not being taught in our schools. You know, it seems like younger people are so unpatriotic, anti-patriotic. And every generation that goes by, it seems like they hate America more and more. And when I was a kid, we were taught to, uh, you know, uh, be thankful for the country that we live in. It's the greatest country on earth. And it has its problems like any country does. But who doesn't? 
but we were taught to uh, honor our president of the United States no matter if we agreed with that person or not. We respected the office of the presidency. And there were many presidents that I didn't necessarily vote for that got in there, but even though I didn't agree with their political agenda, I surely didn't wish uh, them to fail. Uh, you know, it affects all of us. Uh, uh, I pray for our leaders, and I think that we should. Um, I just feel like every generation that's born, it just becomes more and more uh, free of religion thinking. They don't, they don't think about religion at all. They think that religion is dead and that they're being told that there is no God and that they're being told that all these things that they see on commercials is, is normal and that is, uh, it's very mainstream, which it isn't, but they're made to believe that. And, you know, Christians are ridiculed all the time, but if you're, uh, if you're a Muslim or if you're uh, of a different uh, faith, then you're free to do whatever you want to do. But if you're a Christian, uh, that's impossible. You, you will automatically be subjected to persecution and made to feel like you don't have a voice. And that's why I encourage us to stick up for what we believe in. And everything starts in the home. At least we could try to teach our children uh, right from wrong based on God's word, not right from wrong in the eyes of our politicians. But the, what really matters is what's right and wrong in the eyes of God Almighty. And let us always be strong enough to defend God and defend our faith. And don't be ashamed to do so. Stand up proud and uh, uh, stand up for what you believe in. And God will always back you if you stand up for what you believe in. And uh, even if society comes down upon you and starts calling you all kinds of names and all that, I mean, it's tough. <laughs> it certainly is tough. In this world, you seem like you can't even hardly be a Christian or uh, vocally be a Christian. You might be, might be hit in the head or you might be attacked. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate. I know that's in the extreme, but it happens. Um, I just fear the day where if you're automatically a Christian, you're just so ridiculed that you can't hardly even find a job because of your Christianity. Um, you may laugh now, but uh, you never know. 10, 20 years from now, it, it could very well be that way. Uh, there could be a question on an application somewhere that you just never know. It says, you know, if, if you're a Christian, check yes or no. We've A lot of things have changed in the world, and 20, 30 years ago, do you think that uh, things would have been like they are now? Probably not, but here we are. But I wanted to leave on a positive note and say that uh, the Lord, He's very faithful. And even when we fail, He never fails. God never fails. And that's something that I very, uh, I take to my heart. You know, I really cherish that God never fails. And the older that I get, I want to know God more. And I, I do... Uh, treat my fellow man as best I possibly can. I open up doors for people. I don't ask them about their uh, sexual uh, preference. I don't ask them about their uh, faith beliefs. I just open up the door. I smile and, uh, and they say thank you. I say you're welcome. I mean, I, I go to this grocery store. Uh, I say excuse me or pardon me and uh, you know, when I'm going through an aisle and someone may be in my way, I mean, I, you know, and we, we should do these things. And I encourage that we do do these things. And I think that we do. Uh, we just need to continue to teach our children uh, please and thank you and morals and all that. And they will turn out, I believe, just fine. And it's just the world makes it more difficult when you're in school. But like I said, I just want to leave on a good note that God is strong. God is mighty. He's able to fix any problems that we have in our life. And he's able to open up doors of opportunity when you think that all the doors are closed. Nothing is closed when it comes to God. He's able to take a bad situation and make it good. He's able to take uh, maybe a husband and wife that are on odds with each other and make it right. He's able to take 
uh, two family members that have been very bitter rivals for a long time, and he's able to heal that. Uh, he's able to heal uh, cancer. He's able to heal uh, many different uh, diseases and sicknesses. He's done it before. He's doing it now, and he'll do it again. The Lord is great in what he does, and there's no greater love than what he did for us on the cross. On the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, gave up the ghost for his people. And that's something that we should be giving him every day of our lives is our obedience and that we should love him and we should pray often. And as we spend time with our families this week, that we remember that uh, everything that we have is because of God and we give him the glory. Even when we do something that may not be, uh, we feel like God didn't have anything, any part in it, we still give him the glory because he gave us the intelligence. He gave us the means to to provide. He gave us our little church over there. I mean, he, he's really blessed us and he will continue to bless us. So I just want to wish you all a safe week, a happy week, and um, hopefully we will see each other very soon. And uh, may God bless you and stay well. Goodbye.